it right. Today is Friday, June 16, 2023, about 7.30 in the morning. It is about 85 degrees. It's 85% humidity right now, so it's already swampy. And it's going to be 100 degrees today, so I kind of want to get an early start on that. So what we have here is the hood for the 60 and uh, it's in uh, what I'm hoping is original paint and at first glance it looks to be a pretty good piece it's original to the car it's got a little something going on here and it's got a dent somewhere around here if I remember right right there and I kind of think someone set something across this obviously there's a scratch there and it kind of dips a little bit right there so gonna have to work with that the corners are real good and it's it ain't gonna rust so this thing's been sitting in the shop here for a year and a half it's filthy it's got some sort of grease on it it's got uh, metal shavings from when we did the floors and the quarters it's it's in bad shape as far as that so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna strip this whole thing down I'm sure it's original lacquer paint I'm going to be using a couple of these, get these on Amazon, four and a half inch, I call them conditioning discs, I don't know what they're called, but they, they look like, kind of like a, like a foam, and these are good because all they do is remove paint, they don't remove any metal, they remove paint and filler, stuff like this. So I've been debating for the past week on this, how I'm going to approach this, I thought about maybe trying to use some paint stripper, but from what I've read, the stuff is not what it used to be in the 90s early 2000s EPA's really cut back on that type of stuff so uh, these things these discs there are uh, they're like four or five dollars a piece and I'm thinking it's probably gonna take about four of them to get it down to bare metal and so you're talking twenty dollars worth of materials it's probably gonna take me about a solid hour maybe two and then I'm gonna clean it and then go over it with 80 grit on the DA and then and then get it in epoxy on the underside, I'm not sure that I'm really going to gut the underside completely. It still has the original uh, underhood pad or whatever you want to call it with the retainers. So, as you can see, it's a pretty solid piece. It's one of the reasons why I bought the car. And it hasn't had, it doesn't look like it has any repair to it. And it's had no no previous repair so I'm gonna get this thing down to bare metal here it's gonna be a hot one but uh, I'll bring you guys back once I get some progress man it is hot it's not hot it's so humid it's, it's it went up it's 88 percent humidity now here's what we got so this is one disc later really more like half a disc that's still got some good meat on it but I'm gonna I'm gonna junk it and go with a new one. Um, they even though it's got meat on there, it, it loses its uh, cutting action as the smaller it gets. Kind of like a cutoff wheel. Anyways, this is the first round. So one disc later took me probably about maybe a good 40 minutes, and I just took so it's, it's original paint. Never had any type of repair on it. As you can see, it just had black black paint black lacquer white under it primer I assume and then bare metal so a little bit of surface here but that'll that'll DA out um, so I just kind of took the first layer off I didn't really want to sit and, and go at it and, and bare metal you know the whole thing as you go because that gets the metal hot once you get the metal hot things start warping I mean this thing already has an oil can issue from the factory so we're gonna try and some shrinking disc action on that see I mean it's just to let you know that that's from the factory and uh, that's how they were and they had one coat of paint on them and that paint is thick so that paint fills any little dents or you know real minor imperfections like that that lacquer paint will fill it so uh, it makes quite a mess on the floor as you can see but it'll all blow out I should have done this in the grass. I wanted to get some shade out here, but the sun's not even out. So, uh, what I plan to do now is now I can go over. Now that the heavy stuff is off, 
this other new disc will we'll zip this off real quick so we're looking at maybe another another half hour of work it's gonna go quick I already mixed up some epoxy I mixed up 24 ounces so I'll hopefully uh, in a couple of hours uh, here I'll be able to epoxy this and, and lock it down and see what we got from there um, you want to let that epoxy induce that's what they recommend for bare metal so I did uh, I did go over it with wax and grease remover before I started uh, mainly on this section because when I had it in the shop uh, here it was under a, uh, a grease gun a pneumatic grease gun that had dripped over the course of some months in this area and I really didn't I mean it's probably over overkill but I didn't want to start you know digging in and getting to the metal with with a bunch of grease slinging everywhere because then it kind of you know it might get stuck in the metal and you know who knows it might come back later so I cleaned it up first wax and grease removed it then then hit it with that disc so let me get this other uh, other disc here set up and we're gonna knock the rest of this out and bring you guys back all right man it is noon it's 100 degrees out here so I've been plugging away at this thing for a solid four hours and I got it pretty much where I want it it's about 98 percent bare metal there's just little areas just little spots that you know, I could sit here for another two hours and get it perfect, but I don't think it's necessary. Um, so I used the blue, the blue uh, abrasive disc, conditioning discs, and I did cheat a little bit. Um, I used 36 grit on a three inch roll lock. A couple of those to get some stubborn areas out like this. And then uh, went over the whole thing with, with a DA. Did the edges. So the reason why you do the DA is because I think those uh, conditioning discs more like polish the metal instead of scratching it. So, and that epoxy, you want that epoxy to, to, to bite into it. So 80 grit on the DA. And, uh, and it was original paint, but it was three layers. So it had the, the lacquer black, had the white primer. And then it had a black under the white primer. And really that white primer was the most stubborn because it was thick, man. It was like basically like, like a glaze, glazed the whole hood. Uh, so there's a dent here. Uh, there's a little bit of something going on. Little, little dent here, like some, somebody leaned something on it or and who knows. But the good thing is it's, a, it's an original piece, uh, zero rust zero rust repair the holes are nice and dry got the lip right here the best I could it's, it's kind of awkward I probably could sandblast it but I don't think it's necessary if it was up closer to, to what's shown then then I would do that but you got the hood lip that's gonna cover that whole thing so but I did get all the edges so it's noon so what I'm gonna do now is is, is wipe this thing down with the alcohol based wax and grease remover let it sit for about half an hour uh, and then grab something to eat and then come back and spray epoxy. I got 24 ounces mixed up. It's been mixed for about three hours. So let me get this thing wiped down, moved inside the little paint room there and I'll bring you guys back. All right, so it's been about 40 minutes. Ate some lunch, cooled off a little bit, changed my clothes and we're ready to go ahead and spray this with epoxy. So what I did was I cleaned it real good with the waterborne uh, wax and grease remover, SPI. With a microfiber rag first, just to get the heavy stuff off. Did that a few times, blew it off. And then I came back with, uh, with these that I've been using. I really like them. Yeah, buddy. Got these on Amazon, and they're they're professional grade white. And I did that about two or three times, so now the thing is completely clean, and I haven't touched it, haven't done anything to it, and uh, I'm just gonna attack it off real quick, and then uh, get to spraying. So what we're gonna do is utilize what we learned last with the V-bore. Man, it's so hot out here. 97 degrees in this room and it's insulated. 
All right, just real quick here. So what we're gonna do is utilize what we learned about the Vivor is that it sprays heavy. So I changed the cup out, put the original cup on because I mixed up uh, 24 ounces. So we're gonna do it with two turns out from closed and go with a light coat first so the epoxy can be introduced to the panel, blend with it in, not argue with it. And then uh, I should be able to get uh, at least two coats, but I'm, I'm aiming for three. So let me get you guys set up on the chest plate and we'll get to spraying. So here we are three coats later it is now 97 in here and uh one thing i can say about the epoxy is it definitely acts different in in 95 97 degree versus 75. but i was able to to get three coats on there and uh it's just the beginning of, of many stages but overall it's not really that bad um it's got some dents across the front the camera's gonna pick it up it's got several on this side right here Pretty nasty one right there. Another one back here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna let this sit. I'm gonna move it outside in about an hour. And then I'm gonna come in tomorrow and smear, smear whatever filler I need on it. And the process will go from there. I also need to flip it over. Now when I flip it over, I really, I don't think I'm gonna go bare metal on the underside. I don't think it's necessary. We're gonna see. 
Oh, we'll cross that bridge when we get there. I'll just leave it at that. So, I think that's going to cut it off for this video. And I'll, I'll bring you guys back once, uh, once I start the bodywork process on this. So Y'all stay tuned. Thanks for watching. All right, all right. Welcome back here. It is Friday, or I'm sorry, Sunday. Sunday, June 18th, 2023 is Father's Day weekend. So I want to get a couple hours out here in before we do any celebrating. Uh, what I'm going to do today is basically work this underside of the hood, get this retainer off, get all this mat out, see what's under it. And then uh, I'm going to clean it up. Bobby decided to show up on a Sunday. On a Sunday, yeah, on a Sunday. So I don't think I'm gonna bare metal any of this, but I think I'm just gonna clean it up, wire wheel it maybe, and then uh, I'll probably go straight to 2K primer on this. I am gonna rerun the mat. I'm gonna get a new mat, so the bulk of it's gonna be covered. And so I'm not too worried about. It. I really don't want to waste the epoxy because I have more more 2K primer right now than I do epoxy. I kind of want to save the epoxy for the top side. So, it's going to be a pretty easy process. Is that... What? There's no rust. There's no rust at all. Back hinge is good. So, let me get this thing disassembled. And I'll bring you guys back. Alright, alright. Here we are. About three hours later. And I got the underside of the hood cleaned up pretty good. Um, first I washed it with a red pad and soap and then, and then I DA'd it with 80 grit and 80 grit by hand and then 180 on the DA and 180 by hand and then I washed it again with soap and water. So it's pretty clean. It's smooth, the touch. Um, like I said, I didn't see a need for to go bare metal on this. Um, so I'm just gonna 2K primer over this. Um, uh, a good note is that uh, so GM looks like they use some paint stir sticks in the panels to uh, to help with the whole oil cannon issue which I thought that was pretty cool I had to do the same thing in some areas back here um, as far as the center mat or the sound deadener or whatever it is you definitely don't want to remove that so I just went with a razor and kind of trimmed it up to to uh, to edge there. If you take if you were to try and get all that out, you're gonna have a big big oil can problem. Uh, so let me put some here. That's 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 a uh, that's from the factory. So I thought that was cool. Uh, what I'm gonna be using is U pole four to one. Like I say, I'm not a big fan of this primer, but I think for for this particular job, it's perfect. It's perfect. So I'm gonna put put three coats on. And then, uh, you know, it's ready. It's ready for the final sand and paint. And like I said, I'm going to re-put the mat, so the majority of this is going to be covered. Um, so let me get to mixing. I'll bring you guys back here.
All right, all right. So what you guys do saw me do is put three three rounds of the primer, 2K high build, mixes four to one. And the last coat I reduced it to try and smooth it out a little bit because it was spraying a little dry. Uh, and I think that's simply because it's 100 degrees, 99. 99 degrees you really can't do anything you can't spray anything in this type of heat it doesn't it doesn't flow it doesn't do anything i mean it was it was dry like five seconds after i sprayed it so but nonetheless it's coated and really all it needs is one round of sanding and it's ready for sealer uh it did have a lot of trash blowing out from in here um i'll address that issue whenever i'm getting ready to paint i'm going to paint it probably hanging will help with that but so that's going to be the start of this process is thinking I'm going to go straight to probably 400 and uh, 400 wet and, and it's ready for paint, but I got to body work the top side first. So I'm going to let it sit out here in the sun. That's about the only thing this 99 degree weather is good for is baking. So I'm going to let it bake out here the rest of the day, flip it over, start on the body work. So you guys stay tuned for more work. Bring you guys back once we do that process.